I'm excited to share with you a cool question, which is easy to understand, but which doesn't have an obvious answer. You're presented with the 2x3 matrix. This matrix has arrows inside. There are two types of arrows, solid arrows, and then there are arrows that consist of three different shapes. There are six possible spaces in the 2x3 matrix. Five shapes are present, and one shape is missing. You're presented with four different choices to identify the missing shape, which is highlighted by the question mark. You have choices A, B, C, and D. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can identify the right answer. Did you figure out the correct answer? Let's continue to see if we can get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, you always need to look for patterns. And there are three different patterns present in this sequence. Let's look at the pattern one. If we start from the upper left corner and go clockwise, you see that the arrows change alternatively in each subsequent box. Second pattern is that inside the box, solid arrows rotate clockwise. And then the third pattern, which is a little harder to identify, is that the previous arrow points to the next arrow start. This is why the missing part, the part that you would need to identify, contains an arrow placed in the right corner pointing to the left. So the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. But in case you need more problems and solutions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. I wanted to share with you a cool question which started showing up on the tests very recently. You're presented with the 3x3 matrix. Each square of the matrix contains another matrix inside with the 3x3 small squares. There are different colors inside 3x3 small squares. In this case, we see gray, white, and black. One 3x3 square is missing, and you need to select out of the four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. And your goal is to determine which of the following shapes completes the figure. Take a close look and see if you can identify the missing item. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. Well, when you look for the first time, you might be intimidated by this matrix. But the answer actually is very simple. If we look closely at the smaller matrices, you see that the letters are being formed. You see that in the upper left corner, black boxes form a letter V. And if we look at the upper right corner, you see that the letter V also shows up. But now it's turned clockwise from the previous position. Let's go to the second row. In the second row, you can recognize letter T. And this letter shows up in the left column. But if we look in the middle row, in the right column, you see that the same letter T now is turned 90 degrees from the previous position. So now, if we follow the same logic, you can recognize letter V in the bottom left corner. According to the pattern that we've identified, this letter should be turned 90 degrees in the bottom right corner. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. In case you need to practice with more questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. I am excited to take advantage of the opportunity and share with you how to solve these types of problems on the test. Typically, when you get a problem, you need to determine which object does not belong to the group. In this particular case, you need to determine which square doesn't belong to the group. You are presented with four different squares, choices A, B, C, and D. Each square contains two circles inside. In the large circle, quarter of each circle is missing, and instead replaced with the small circle. All squares also have triangles in the corner. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. The key to solving this challenge is to detect the pattern. This is the skill that you need to develop to be successful in the test. Because there are two shapes here present in this question, triangles and circles, you should try to detect pattern among triangles and then among circles. 
in this particular question, there is only one pattern, pattern of the triangles. But there are some sophisticated questions on the test, which might include patterns for both shapes. In this particular case, the pattern is that the square should contain the equal number of black and white triangles in the corners. Triangles in the square A positioned diagonally across each other. White triangles are located in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. And black triangles are located in the bottom left corner and in the upper right corner. You can see that the same pattern exists in the shape B, two white triangles and then two black triangles. And in the shape C, two black triangles on the left and two white triangles on the right. But if we look at the choice D, you see that there are four black triangles in the corners. Circles in this picture do not have a pattern, and their primary goal is to confuse you. If you look at the circles closely, you see that the large-small circle pattern doesn't exist. We have black-white, shape B black-white, shape C white-black, and then shape D white-white. Based on this information about the circles, we should ignore them and focus on the triangles inside the squares. This is why the odd shape, the shape that doesn't belong to the group, is the one that does not have equal distributions of all colors in the corners. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you might get a question which asks you to determine the sales increase. You're typically presented with the graph, which shows lines that represent different sales. In our case, we are represented with the chart that shows sales of cardio equipment from January to June, sales of bikes represented by the blue line, sales of elliptical represented by the orange line, and sales of treadmills are represented by the gray line. The question asks you to determine largest sales increase. Specifically, you need to determine which period represents the largest one month's number of item sales increase for cardio equipment sales. You have four different choices. Choice A, bikes from January to February. Choice B, bikes from February to March. Choice C, ellipticals, March to April. And choice D, treadmill, May to June. Do you see the answer? You may need to look closely to determine the correct answer for this question. Give yourself five to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the right solution. Are you ready? We're going to move forward and cover the answer for this problem and get to the solution together. To answer this question, we need to look at the graph closely. For each data point on the graph, we need to determine the actual value. And once we have all the numbers, we need to answer the question by looking at the differences for equipment sales from months to months. Specifically, in this case, you need to evaluate four different choices that are represented by answers A through D. Let's do it together. Based on the chart, bike sales increased by two from January to February, and the increase was from five to seven items sold. Bike sales also increased by two from seven to nine between February and March. Elliptical sales, on the other hand, increased by seven from March to April jumping from 2 to 9, and treadmill sales increased by 4 between May and June, going up from 2 to 6. So the correct answer here is choice C, elliptical sales from March to April, because jump was by 7 from 2 to 9. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I am very excited to present you with simple, but at the same time very tricky question, which tests your math skills as well as attention to details. Florist has 77 beautiful plants. All but seven were sold. How many plants are left? You have four different choices. Choice A, seven. Choice B, 77. Choice C, 70. And choice D, 84. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. 
The answer to this question is very simple. Seven plants are left. The answer is hidden in the tricky worded sentence. All but seven sold. So the correct answer here is choice A, seven. Hopefully you've read this question correctly, understood it very well, and solved it on your own. I had this question being asked as part of consulting job interview. How many seconds are there in a year? Take a look at the picture. It might give you a hint. Do you think you know the answer? Think of the logic, how would you calculate how many seconds are there in the year? Or maybe there is an alternative. Always try to think out of the box. This would be my hint to you. And give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is as much time as you might get answering these types of questions in the test. Now let's continue and get to the correct solution together. Obviously, this is a tricky question and it challenges you in understanding of the word second. There are two meanings in the word second. One is second, for example, one minute has 60 seconds. But second one is second, where you have sequence of first and second. And the second meaning of the second is used in this particular question. So if we go back to the question, in the year there are 12 months and there are 12 second days. One second day in each month, January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, and etc. Hopefully you've nailed this question, it gives you some laugh, and you now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Some of you might disagree, but calculating missing numbers is one of my favorite types of questions. A lot of times, you are presented with the 3 by 3 matrix, typically a square, which has small squares inside. In our case, we have numbers in the different colors presented in the smaller squares inside the larger square. The numbers are 5, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4. And then one number is missing, and this is the one that you need to calculate. Once you complete the calculation, you need to select one of the four different choices. Choice A, 0, choice B, 1, choice C, 2, and choice D, 3. Take a look closely and see if you can identify the missing number. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can come up with the right solution. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. As usual, my advice to you, always look for patterns. In this particular case, we need to look at the patterns inside the rows and then inside the columns. Let's look at the first two rows to see if we can get a pattern. The sum of 5 plus 2 plus 1 equals to 8. The sum of 2 plus 3 plus 3 also equals to 8. So there might be a pattern. Let's look if there is a pattern for the columns that have full sets of numbers. 5 plus 2 plus 4 equals 11. 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 9. So there is no pattern. In this case, we can relatively simply use the pattern from the rows. This would allow us to calculate the third row. If we know that the sum should be 8, we can assume that the 4 plus 4 plus question mark, which would be representing the missing number, would be equal to 8. So the missing number would be equal to 0. The correct choice here is choice A, 0. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Very frequently on the test, you might be asked to detect the pattern. In this question, we're being asked which item comes next in the sequence. And we're presented with the sequence of items. Six items in the sequence are visible. 0, 2, 6, 12, 20, and 30. And the next item is missing. And you're being asked to select one of the four following choices. Choice A, 42. Choice B, 44. Choice C, 46 and choice D, 48. Do you see the answer? It may or may not be obvious, depending upon your skills of detecting the pattern. Like it or not, we're gonna continue and I'll share with you the answer. As with any type of question, the key is to determine the pattern. To determine the answer in this particular case, you need to increment previous number by the greater even digit in the sequence. 
you can even come up with the formula. And in our case, the formula to determine the next number would be current number plus 2 multiplied by current position. Let's see how it works. For example, let's take the number 0. This is the first number in the sequence. To determine the next number in the sequence, we need to add previous number, which is 0, and then 2 multiplied by 1, because number 0 has the first position in the sequence. Instead of using the formula, you can also use the next even number and add it to the previous number. The even numbers are 2, 4, 6, and you can increment them down the list. So you can add 2 to 0, the next one would be 4, 2 plus 4 equals 6, the next number would be 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, the next number would be 8, and 12 plus 8 equals 20. The number after that would be 10, so 20 plus 10 would be 30, and the number after that would be 12, and 30 plus 12 equals 42. The correct choice here is choice A, 42. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's one of my favorite questions, and it is my favorite because it is so unusual. You are presented with the pyramid. Pyramid contains five different layers. If we go from the top to bottom, you have a question mark. This is the number that you need to uncover. The next layer contains numbers 24 and 28. Layer below this contains numbers 10, 12, and 14. Next layer has 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the last layer has numbers 3, 1, 4, 2, and 5. You are presented with four different choices for the missing number. Choice A, 55. Choice B, 56. Choice C, 57. And choice D, 60. Do you see the answer? You will be surprised how simple it is to get to the answer when we go to the next step. Give yourself 5, 10, maybe 15 seconds to see if you can calculate and get to the correct answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue and see how we can get to the correct solution together. Well, here, to be honest, I tried to trick you. I went in describing numbers from top to bottom, but in reality, you should be looking at the numbers from bottom to the top. If we start from the bottom row, for example, with numbers 3 and 1, you see that the sum of 3 and 1 will add up to 4. But then it gets trickier. If we go from the second row to the third row, you see that the 4 and 5 does not necessarily add up in 10. 4 and 5 adds up in 9, and then you need to increment it by 1. If you go to the next layer, you need to increment it by 2. And then in the final row, you need to increment it by 3. So the correct answer here is choice 55. Let's recap. Starting with the bottom row, the sum of two squares results in the number in the next row. For example, 2 plus 5 equals 7. However, as each level continues, the sum increases by 1. For example, 4 plus 5, we need to increment and add 1 to get to 10. So the answer is calculated by adding up 24 plus 28 plus 3 which would be equal to 52 plus 3 and would be equal to 55. The correct answer here is choice A, 55. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you might be presented with the question on the test that will try to determine your knowledge of English words as well as how quickly you can extract these words from your memory. In this particular case, we are looking at four letters. Q, A, A, and U. And you need to guess the word by combining these letters. Do you see the word? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Let's continue to see how we can get the correct answer together. As you might have figured out, the correct answer here is word aqua. The spelling of the final word is A, Q, U, A. And you can get to the correct answer by rearranging the letters on the screen. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you get tested on your ability to analyze charts and graphs. In this question, we see a pie chart, which is broken down into two parts. 
you see parts presented in the different colors – white, red, blue, gray and black. And the question asks you how many cars. Let's read the question more carefully. The pie chart shows the colors of the cars past traffic light in one hour period. A total of 250 cars pass the traffic light. The number of white cars is represented by an angle of 90 degrees. Approximately how many white cars pass the traffic light? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 57. Choice B, 60. Choice C, 63. And Choice D, 67. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution and solve this challenge together. A lot of times, answer given to you as part of the question. And this is one of those cases. Pie chart is represented by a 360 degree circle. We know that 90 degree angle represents number of white cars past the traffic light. And 90 degrees is a quarter of 360. To do the calculations, you need to divide 90 by 360, which is a quarter or 0 0.25. We need to build the proportion to calculate the final value. If total number of cars past the traffic light is 250 and it's represented by a 360 degree circle, to calculate the number of white cars passed, we need to multiply 250 by 0 0.25. So the end result is 62.5. The closest value among the answers is 63. So the correct choice here is choice C, 63. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the interesting question, which is easy to understand, but at the same time you will have a lot of fun solving it. You need to calculate the simple expression, 12 divided by 2 and then multiply it on the value in parentheses, which is 3 minus 1. Take a look closely and see if you can come up with the answer. There are three operations here division, multiplication, and subtraction. All you need to determine is which one to do first, second, and third. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue and get it solved together. The order of operations in math tells us that the first expression we need to solve is in parentheses. We first need to calculate 3 minus 1. And obviously, the answer is 2. The big question is what do we do next? The order PEMDAS tells us that we need to do multiplication and division. But what order doesn't mention is that we need to do it from left to right. And what's interesting, the acronym itself is a little bit confusing, because it shows multiplication first and then division. But in our case, we need to do division first and divide 12 by 2, and then do multiplication. Once we divide 12 by 2, we get to 6, and the final expression we need to solve would be 6 multiplied by 2. So the correct answer here is 12. So did you solve this challenge on your own? Was it easy for you? Please share your thought process and your solution in the comment section of this video. This is one of my favorite questions because it is very frequently used in a test. You are presented with five crossing circles. All circles are of the different colors. There are numbers inside the circles as well as the numbers on the intersections of the circles. In this particular case, you're presented with five different circles, all of them different colors, and the numbers that you see on the screen are 13, 3, 4, 7, 5, 10, 1, and 15. There is also one number missing, which is highlighted with the question mark. You need to calculate the missing number, and the choices are choice A, 7, choice B, 8, choice C, 9, and choice D, 11. Give yourself a few seconds, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you get on the typical test to calculate the answer. Do you see the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution and solve this challenge together. As you might have figured out by now, sum of each numbers in the circle adds up to 16. For example, let's look at the green circle. We have numbers 13 and 3, and 13 plus 3 equals 16. In the blue circle, we have numbers 4 plus 7 plus 5, and all of them add up to 16. 
In the black circle, we have 1 and 15, also adds up to 16. And in the orange circle, we have 5 plus 1 plus 10, also equals 16. So to calculate question mark, which is the missing number, we need to add 3 plus 4 plus question mark and make an equation to make it equal 16. After doing the calculation, you see that the question mark and the missing number equals 9. So the correct choice here is choice C, 9. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a very cool question that you frequently see on the test. You are presented with four rectangles. In each one of these rectangles, there are different shapes. Each shape is of the different color. Three rectangles have shapes present, and fourth rectangle on the right has all the shapes missing. You have four different choices to identify the missing item in the sequence. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you think you can come up with the answer? Give yourself some time. You can pause this video to see if you can identify the pattern. Give yourself 5 to 10, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. In most types of problems, there are typically multiple patterns present. For example, let's look at the color pattern. If you look closely, you see that the first shape inside the rectangle is always black. Second shape is always purple third shape is always white, and the rightmost shape is always yellow. The second pattern that you can see if you look closely is the pattern of rotating shapes. You can see that the rightmost shape in the previous rectangle always becomes the leftmost shape in the next rectangle. For example, the yellow arrow from the first rectangle becomes the black arrow in the second rectangle. If you are able to identify at least one of these patterns, you will be able to solve this problem. Let's look at each of the answers and try to exclude the incorrect answers. For example, choice A does match the color pattern. But if you look closely, the next shape after the circle should be triangle and not the L shape as it is currently presented in the choice A. Choice B can be excluded because it doesn't match the color pattern. As you can see, the yellow shape and white shape should be swapped to match the color pattern. Choice C is the correct answer. It does meet requirements for both patterns. And choice D does not match the color pattern. Two rightmost shapes are yellow. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. But in case you need more questions like this, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. The types of questions you're looking at is very frequently used on the test. Typically, you're being asked to determine the item which does not belong to the group and you're presented with multiple items. In our choice, we have choices A, B, C, and D. Each item is represented as a square which contains multiple different items inside. And you need to determine the item which does not belong to this particular pattern or sequence. Do you see the answer? Please take a look to see if you can come up with the solution. Give yourself five to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue to see how we can go and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out by now, there is always a pattern that you need to detect to answer these types of questions correctly. And a lot of times, there are items that are designed to confuse you. So let me first walk you through the items that are designed to confuse you. You have small circles, and there are four small circles in each of the square. And the small circles do not have any patterns. We also have triangles. Some squares have two triangles and some squares only have one. But there is no pattern here. The pattern is actually defined by the half circle. And as you can see, all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. You see this in the shapes A, B, and C. But in shape D, half circle in placed in a different location. It is in the bottom middle of the square. This is why the item that doesn't belong to the group is the choice D. So the correct answer here is choice D. Let's recap. The pattern here is that all half circles are attached to the corners of the square. But half circle in the shape D is placed in a different place than the others. The half circle there is in the lower part of the square. This is why the correct answer here is choice D. 
Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. This is one of my favorite questions and there is a very high chance that you will get it on the assessment test. How many triangles do you see? You're presented with the shape on the left. There is a large triangle and there are also lines inside of this large triangles. You have four different choices. Choice A, nine triangles. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 17. And choice D, 24. One triangle is highlighted in red, but there are a lot of other triangles. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a few seconds. I would recommend 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the real test. You can pause this video to give yourself some time to figure out the answer. I am going to continue and reveal the correct solution so we can get to the answer together. I counted 12 triangles in this picture. Is this what you got too? Let me show them all for you. I'll start with the smaller triangles and then go to the medium-sized ones and then go to the large ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Did you come up with the different answer? Please share your thought process in the comment section of this video so we can all learn from your perspective. Hopefully you nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. Here's one of my favorite questions because it is very frequently used in a test. You're presented with the matrix, four by three matrix. Each cell in the matrix has numbers. For example, first row in the matrix has numbers 2, 8, 7, and 6. Second row has numbers 9, 5, 9, 5. And the third row has numbers 9, 7, 4, and one number in the bottom right corner is missing. And this is exactly what you need to calculate. You can choose from one of four different choices. Choice A, 5. Choice B, 7. Choice C, 9. And then choice D, 11. Do you think you can come up with the answer? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get on the test. Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct answer together. The key to solve this problem is to determine the pattern. And the pattern either can be in the rows or in columns. In this particular case, let's check the columns first. And then what you see is that each column adds up to the value of 20. For example, 2 plus 9 plus 9 is 20. 8 plus 5 plus 7 is 20. 7 plus 9 plus 4 is 20 as well. We also want to check if there is a pattern with the rows. And there is no pattern. Because the first row adds up to 23. 2 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 equals 23. And the second row adds up to 28. 9 plus 5 plus 9 plus 5 equals 28. So there is no pattern. Based on this information, you can calculate the missing value in the fourth column. 6 plus 5 plus question mark equals 20. So the answer is C, 9. This is the missing value. Hopefully you figured it out and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I'm extremely excited to share with you the question that tests your pattern recognition skills. You're presented with three columns. Each column has three numbers. In the first column, we see numbers 2, 7, 5. In the second, middle column, we see numbers 2, 3, and 4. And in the last, rightmost column, column number 3, we see numbers 10, 21, and then one number missing. You need to find the missing value, which is highlighted by question mark. You need to find the missing value, and you have four choices to choose from. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 16. Choice C, 27. And choice D, 36. Do you think you can recognize missing value? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The most important skill to solve these types of problems is pattern recognition skill. To recognize the pattern, you need to look closely into each column. Selective values in columns 1 and 2 
by multiplication get to the value in column 3. And this is our pattern. Let's take a closer look for the values that are already present. If we multiply 5 by 2, we get to the value of 10. Second set of values represented by the middle row. 7 multiplied by 3 equals 21. So the missing values here can be calculated by multiplying 2 by 4 and the end result would be equal to 8. So the correct answer to this problem is choice A, 8. I also wanted to share with you one of the typical mistakes people make as part of answering these types of questions. People start looking at the columns themselves. But unfortunately, there is no pattern just by looking in the values in column 1, since pattern just doesn't exist. If you look only at the values in column 1, or only at the values in column 2, or only at the values in column 3, you will not be able to come up with the answer. You have to look across and take a global view across multiple columns to get to the correct solution. Can you do me a favor? If you have a better way of solving this challenge, please share your thought process in the comment section of this video. You're going to love this problem because it is so confusing. You're presented with multiple set of calculations. In our case, we have two full calculations, and one calculation is missing the final value. The first calculation is 22 multiplied by 22 equals 16. Second calculation is 33 multiplied by 33 equals 36. And then the last calculation is 44 multiplied by 44 equals question mark. And you need to calculate question mark. You have four different choices. Choice A, 52. Choice B, 56. Choice C, 60. And choice D, 64. Do you see the answer? It's not obvious. So give yourself 5 to 10 seconds, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I'm going to reveal the answer, and we're going to get to the correct solution together. Typically, to solve these types of problems, you need to identify the pattern. And in this particular case, the pattern is that the sign and parentheses are hidden in between digits and are not presented on the screen. Let's look at the first two examples. 22 multiplied by 22 equals 16. It is not obvious because it doesn't go along with the rules of conventional math. But if you add parentheses, and in parentheses add 2 plus 2, multiplied another set in parentheses 2 plus 2, you will be multiplying 4 by 4 and the result would be equal 16. Same thing with 3 by 3. If you add in parentheses 3 plus 3, multiply by another set in parentheses 3 plus 3, you will be multiplying 6 plus 6 and the result will be 36. So the correct answer here is the set in parentheses 4 plus 4 multiplied by another set in parentheses 4 plus 4, which would be multiplication of 8 by 8 and the end result of this would be 64. So the correct answer here is choice D, 64. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.